Do you think pornography should be banned on social media, Dr. K? Should pornography be banned on social media? Yes, pornography should mm. be banned. I can answer that. I'm, I'm, mm. I'm making it. I definitely think it should be banned, but I don't that the, the explicit images should be banned. But the right to discuss about it, to talk about it, to give uh, sexual advice or to, you know, discuss different topics around sexuality. We should be allowed to do that. We should be allowed. Well, we're allowed to do that. No, I get I get banned too. Really? Because this doesn't get banned. Maybe you are allowed YouTube to YouTube is it. different. Twitter's fine. Instagram's fine. YouTube's fine. I think Instagram, Instagram. I have, Meta is I tough. Have TED Talks that are censured, so only mm. people who are over 18 and have an account online have access to watch, watch them. And it's me talking. Mm. Yeah, no, it def there is definitely uh, limitations. The, the, the thing that we've noticed is you, your video just doesn't appear in search in the same way, but they still recommend the video. So when we had, for example, Andrew Huberman on a couple of weeks ago and he talked about pornography mm -hmm. because porn was in the title and the thumbnail, the video got huge recommendations by the algorithm. But if you typed in Andrew Huberman, it would not come up mm -hmm. until we took the word porn out and you type in Andrew Huberman and it comes up. Mm -hmm. So that's the only thing we've noticed, but we've been quite surprised actually by... Yeah, I, I think it's so cool that like, you know, you asked me that question and she jumped in with an answer. Uh, no, no, I think it's good. I, I think it's like, because so, you ask, I mean, I think that's the value of this, right? Because I, I don't feel nearly as passionate. I mean, you asked her the question, you know, is it, which of these is the best? And I jumped in with an answer. I was right. like, this is clear to me. Mm -hmm. And and I, I think just a couple of things that I just want to uh, touch on. The first is that, um, you know, what Dr. Bollock was saying about, you know, audio lit literature, or like erotic mm -hmm. fiction or romance novels. Right. So I, I think it's harder to commoditize that, which goes back to Erica's point of, of, you know, like some things are more likely to be turned into fast food. So I think that uh, erotic literature, it's like harder to do that. Um, I also do think that going back to this earlier point of like, you know, men are epidemiologically more vulnerable to addiction. I think it's more complicated than that. And it just uh, psychological hurt or problems manifest in men as addiction and look different in, in women when it emerges. Um, so I think it's kind of like, you know, so we're, we're sort of seeing a difference in addictive quality. It's easier to commoditize more sensory organs. Uh, so I, I think that's an important point. And I, I think in terms of, you know, should it be banned or not? Like, I don't know. Um, so I work kind of like more at the individual level and arguably some at scale. But like one of the key things is, you know, I have some ideas about what should be done, but I, I'm not too sure about that. I'm, I'm curious, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I, I mean, No, but I'm saying it basically because it's open for kids again. Mm -hmm. the, this is why I'm saying if, if we're having social media yeah. and it's for people 18 and above, then we're talking about another thing. But go to Twitter or it's not called Twitter anymore, uh, the X, yes. go there and it's full of porn. It is. It is. It is full of porn. You can you accidentally stumble across porn. I was saying this to my partner a couple of weeks ago. I said, look at what, how Twitter's changed. And I said, watch this. Scroll down my timeline. And I know there's algorithm. So if I dwell on something more often, then it's going to show me more. But I scrolled down. <laughs> <laughs> I scrolled down. I was like, look. Porn. Yeah. And I was like, oh, look, she's taking her clothes off. Yeah. Scroll, scroll, scroll. So I didn't, I didn't realize being it was new to the It gun. didn't happen. It, I've yeah. actually not seen it, but I've had yeah. many people who tell me that it comes up on their feed all the time. Recent change to the algorithm, which is prioritized again, um, viewership time. Mm -hmm. So if you want to p want people to dwell longer, show them video, extreme video, people being shot, someone being hit by a car, fights, pornography. Wow. You increase your dwell time, you increase your advertising. Yeah. And this is just how incentives play out. So much of the discussion we've had today and much of my like, why I refer to it sometimes as, as being idealistic, because sometimes it can sound like just give them broccoli. Mm -hmm. When actually, if you leave them to their own devices, mm -hmm. no one's going to want broccoli. They're going to take the cookies if the cookies are available. And if you equate this to food, we did put labels on food to say, look, this has got this much calories in it. We've yeah. put a sugar tax on sugar in the yes. UK. We, you know, on cigarettes, we say, if you smoke these cigarettes, this is what's going to happen mm -hmm. to your lungs. And we put explicit images of how your lungs will get, you know, cancers and things like this. Should we be doing something similar with pornography? Because part of me goes, just, you know, saying we should just give them broccoli, this kind of like erotic, different point. They're not going to, they're not going to eat it. No, yeah. but, but, but also, again, 
adults, I think they have the right to watch pornography, whatever kind of pornography it is, as long as it's legal and 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 well done. I wish all pornography would be ethically produced. I know that the industry is working towards more standards, etc. Because, you know, we have been as a society talking about it. They don't have much of a choice because if they don't go that way... Should we, should we tell them about the harms of pornography at the point of consumption like we do with cigarettes? It's a bit difficult, maybe. I, th- I think we should we should talk about what could happen. Like gambling. What effects like like gambling, like but but this also happens with you you've been talking about gaming a lot, you know. Uh, there's a way of, of gaming and healthy gaming, right? There's a way of video games that is too much and not too much. I What do you think? Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I, I think it's it's a great question. So I've got like um, a couple yeah. of different things. So I'm gonna about to contradict myself. So the first is that <laughs> we know that you know putting warning labels on things does move things in the right direction. Mm-hmm. But I'd love to just share a story. So when I was a medical student, didn't really understand much about medicine or psychiatry or humans. Um, you know, I had a patient who came in and was smoking. And so I, I came in and I was like, you know, he came in, I was like a first year medical student. So I was like, I'm gonna be a doctor one day. <laughs> and so the, this person comes in, and I'm like, sir, do you know that smoking is dangerous? It can yeah. cause lung cancer, it can do this, it can do this, it can do this. So the person's like, yeah, you know, oh, like that sounds bad. I don't want lung cancer. And I was like, great. We're gonna give you like a prescription to help you quit and you can get a nicotine patch. And like, mm-hmm. I was like, I'm yeah. gonna be a doctor one day. Yeah. So a month later, a guy comes in and like I ask him, how's the quitting smoking going? And he's like, well, I, I'm still smoking. And then I was like, I don't think you understand, man. It increases risk of heart disease and stroke and all these kinds of things. Like it's going to like do all this kind of stuff. And he's like, yeah, oh, that's bad. I don't want any of that stuff. And I was like, cool. So like you're going to quit, right? And he's like, yeah. And so I, I then he comes in and I, I comes in the next month. He still hasn't quit. And I started to try to figure out what's going on, right? So one of the key things that we learned is that if you want someone to eat broccoli instead of cookies, um, telling them that cookies are unhealthy for you isn't good enough. So we need, generally speaking, when you look at recovery from addiction and behavioral change, you have to have a good enough reason to do it. So I was still blunt and I figured this out and talked to my, my preceptor and stuff. And then I asked this person, so what's important to you? And he's like, oh, you know, I love my daughters. And then I asked them a very bad question. I was like, when you, and he was like, I was like, what, you know, tell me about your daughters. And he was like, you know, I can't wait. Like, I'll know I can die a happy person once I've walked them down the aisle and I, they're married and stuff like that. And then I asked him a question. I was like, when you walk down the aisle, do you want to be carrying an oxygen tank behind you? Hmm. And he was like, what? And I was like, if you keep smoking, that's what's going to happen. Or maybe you'll be in a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. Right? So I was a first-year medical student, kind of brutal. But that actually sunk in. You have to connect with people with what yeah. they care about. That is still a warning, though, isn't it? You've put a warning on that. Absolutely, but it's 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 a yeah, little different, right? So so it's individualized. But even now, when we you know I'm I stream on Twitch and I try to get people to stop playing video games, which is like holding an AA meeting in a bar. Mm-hmm. And what I've discovered is I'm with you. We've lost a lot of faith in humanity. If you give them a broccoli and a cookie, they're going to take a cookie. But I I'm still hopeful. I think that we do see the number one search is how do I quit porn? Mm. There's a lot of energy and desire to do it. They just don't have a path. Mm. And I think one of these very simple things is like emphasizing an erotic film and telling people, hey, if you're lonely, hey, if you're having trouble finding a relationship, you know, hey, if you're, if you have a problem with premature ejaculation, or you're having difficulty engaging in a sexual act and can't achieve orgasm, what you need to do is slow it down. Don't make sex a three-minute yeah. Jiggly, slippery experience. Slow it down. Watch an erotic film. Reprogram your brain. Like, I bet you money that if we somehow figured out, if we told people you can reprogram your brain by watching erotic film, and we could say that scientifically, that would be incredibly successful. Because I think people are hungry for this, right? They're hungry yeah. for what we were biologically designed to do, which is connect and have fulfilling sexual relationships. What's your take on that? I, yeah, I think that that's, that would be helpful, absolutely, because I think telling someone to go cold turkey from mm-hmm. having something that they do derive pleasure from, yeah. right, even if, they are, even if they have addictive potential or addictive personalities towards that behavior, then 
giving them something else that they can still derive pleasure from and have the the benefits of orgasm and have the benefits of feeling that desire and enjoyment is is a really great way. When you tell someone you take something away that they've used as a cr- crutch potentially and they have nothing to replace it with. And I, you know, we've talked about this before, giving people a purpose. A lot of times people don't have purpose. And so they're they're like, they have nothing else to do. And they're like, oh, I'll just do this thing because I'm bored. And that's one of the reasons people watch porn is because yeah. they're bored. And so you give them a purpose, something else to do, whether it's an erotic film or actually purpose their life. Um, maybe it's meeting people outside in the real world, which would be even better. That would help our, our issues with not getting married, having high divorce rates and not having kids, right? But like, I think those would be great solutions if we could come up with ways to get people to either find a substitute or find purpose. Interestingly, there's clearly a two-way relationship with purpose, porn, motivation, etc. So it, we giving them a purpose, one might say, well, then we stop porn because then they'll have more motivation to put their shoes on. Yeah, so I, I think, it, you know, if you look at, there's one study that showed the two strongest variables with pornography addiction are a sense of meaninglessness in, the, in life. And uh, I forget what the other variable is, uh, maybe early age of exposure. Um, but so I, I think it's, it's kind of spot on, right? So when I don't have a life that's worth living, what happens? My body and my brain become squeeze bottles of dopamine because what is the joy of life? So I try to just extract as much dopamine as I can for my brain so that I have some joy in the day, some kind of pleasure. And then I watch more of this mass-produced, super normal stimulus pornography because that squeezes more dopamine out of my neurotransmitters. And the more that my life becomes that, now there's a moral component. Now I feel ashamed. Now, if I remember looking at some statistics on online dating profiles and like saying that you're a dude who watches porn is like an instant no. But if I'm watching pornography, it's going to sap me of the motivation to pursue my purpose. Absolutely. So if I'm extracting all my dopamine through watching pornography, I'm going to have none left for behavioral reinforcement from other activities. So reading books becomes not as much fun. Going to a park becomes not as much fun. So it's absolutely this vicious cycle where meaninglessness, I have no reason to do anything all day, so I might as well watch some porn, not erotic film. So we cancel porn then? No. (laughs) <laughs> no, please. <laughs> Let us have it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, the, my, you can. the majority of my income and oh. my brand would collapse oh. if you started banning social. <laughs> no, I mean, I think there, I think we have to, I, I mean, I think there's a lot of things we've talked about, but yeah. I think sexual education, I think imp- uh, understanding that, you know, uh, explaining to younger kids and what they're watching, right? I think adults have a little bit more, um, their brains are fully developed. They understand what they're watching. They know it's a produced product. They presumably have already gone through the process of finding a job and doing other things that give them purpose. Maybe they have children, maybe they have a family, right? But but the, yeah, I think it's really in that young generation that they're finding themselves. Maybe they're going out and they're not finding a partner because we know that there's less people coupling, there's higher, you know, a mismatch of expectations. We've talked about that too, in terms of dating. And so, you know, it's, it's very easy for those people when they're still trying to figure out what to do with their lives to fall into something like that. And I think if we really focus on that generation, I think, and that's a generation that probably shouldn't be watching porn anyways. Right. Um, and, and I think that would make huge, a huge difference. If you love the Diver CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.